Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Erin and today is Book Review Friday. We are talking about Come Closer by Sarah Gran. And I wasn't too sure about this book when I first started it, but I was pleasantly surprised which I will get into later on in the review. But yes, we are talking about Come Closer. This is actually a, a very uh, short book. I recently featured this in my last video. I thought this one would be fun to be the first one out of the books to read. I just felt like reading this one first. So yeah, I'm going to summarize the book for you guys and then I'll get into my overall thoughts. Oh, I, f I forgot to talk about the cover. I do that in every video. How did I forget? We got a girl's face. But it's only the mouth and nose area, which I think is very interesting. You got red, which is a very typical color for horror books. Red and black. I just feel like everyone does that kind of color story for horror. I, I don't know why, but they do. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice cover. It's not anything attention-grabbing, in my opinion. I've seen better covers, but I don't think it's a bad cover. It's just... It's just eh. Anyways, let's move on to the synopsis now, which I was trying to do first, but I apparently don't know how to do a video anymore. Amanda and Ed are very normal people. They have very normal lives and they have a very normal marriage. They also have very normal jobs. Amanda is an architect and Ed works in finance and they just do normal things. They go to flea markets, they go to brunch. They just are very normal people. One day, Amanda drops off a proposal to her boss and he starts freaking out at her. He starts asking her why she would do something like this. What's the point? Like, what's the joke? It turns out that the proposal was just a bunch of papers with really insulting things on it, all about her boss. Amanda seems very confused and she convinces her boss that she did not do this. She prints off the proposal that she intended to give him and shows him that she didn't do this, that it must be a prank, someone must have been putting a joke on, like this was all a big misunderstanding she didn't do this. When Amanda goes home that night, she begins to tell Ed the story of this prank, the proposal, the big mix-up, but she gets interrupted by a very weird tapping sound. They both hear the noise and they both try to look for the source of the noise, but they cannot find anything that would be causing this tapping sound. They decide that the most logical explanations would be mice or the pipes. They live in a very old building. They renovated it to make a very nice loft for themselves. So they think that because the building is old, there could be mice, it could be the pipes, just weird noises from weird old buildings. Then the fighting starts. Ed and Amanda start arguing way more than usual. They're a very happy couple. They have little arguments here and there like every married couple does, but it's becoming more frequent now. Amanda is getting upset about things that she usually doesn't get upset about. Ed, coming home a few hours late, even though he called to let her know, makes her very upset when he finally comes home. It's just these little things that are setting Amanda off more than they usually would. Amanda then starts having very weird, odd dreams. In these dreams is a very alluring woman. Amanda feels like she knows this woman. She just can't put her finger on how or why or what really this woman is. She just knows that she knows her for some reason. In one of her dreams, the woman tells Amanda that she really likes her and asks if she can stay. Amanda ends up saying yes and the woman tells Amanda her name. I'm not sure how to pronounce this name. I think it's Nama. It's N-A-A-M-A-H. I will put it on the screen for you because I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think it's Nama, so. Randomly, one day, Amanda realizes that the woman from her dreams reminds her of her imaginary friend from childhood. This imaginary friend's name was Pansy. Amanda viewed her as a mother figure in her childhood, and the woman in her dreams reminds her a lot 
of Pansy. Amanda also starts smoking again. She gave up smoking when her and Ed began dating because Ed didn't like it and he was worried for her health and he had allergies. So she quit smoking for him and she hadn't smoked in a very long time, but now she is very compelled to smoke and she starts up again. Then one day, Amanda accidentally gets sent the wrong book. She ordered a book about design because she's an architect and instead she gets a book about possession. The book has a quiz in it to determine if you are being possessed. Amanda, just for the fun of it, takes the quiz and ends up scoring a four. And this quiz tells her that she is being haunted or in the early stages of possession. Amanda thinks nothing of it, of course, and just kind of forgets about it. She ends up keeping the book and leaving it on her bookshelf, but she doesn't really pay any attention to her score or what the book is saying. Amanda slowly starts doing more and more things that are very out of character for her. She starts shoplifting, she comes home later and later and drinks after work, and she even burns Ed with a cigarette. These out of character behaviors are just the beginning for Amanda and things slowly become worse and worse. So that is the synopsis. I'm going to stop there because I do not want to give you too much details. Like always, I want you to just have a little toe dip so you can read it for yourself. This book is very short. I mentioned that earlier. It is only 166 pages. However, it captures you the entire time. From the very beginning to the very end, I was hooked. I had to find out what was going on with Amanda. My biggest issue with possession books is they are very slow. Usually there's a lot of buildup. They lead you into the possession very slowly. It's a very slow climb into the climax. At least the possession books I've read, I feel like The Exorcist is that way. Those books are the type that slowly build to that anticipation and I'm not always one for that. I don't love slow builds or slow burns all the time. It's very rare that I find one that I like. I'm much more into very action-packed horror. From the very beginning to the very end, I like things happening. That's just, it keeps my attention better. That's just how I work. So this book surprised me because it's not like other possession books. From the very first page, things are happening and it just goes downhill as you keep reading. It just shoves you into it and it keeps moving forward. There's never a pause or a break. It's very boom, 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 this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. You know what I mean? I really like that. At first, I really didn't think this was going to be a possession book. If you watched my video on Wednesday, I said that I thought it was going to be a book about psychological conditions. It was going to be one of those type of possession books. A lot of possession books like to have the reader question if this is a mental illness or if it is demonic possession. And they will make you question it the entire time you're reading it. And I don't mind that. It's, it's fine. I like not knowing whether it's one or the other. However, this book is very obvious the entire time what's happening. At least to me, it was very obvious where it was going and what was happening. I felt like from the very first couple chapters, it gave you so much evidence for demonic possession and then as you keep reading, it just keeps pointing. This just giant arrows screaming, demonic possession, it's what's happening, this is the plot. And I like that. I like the obviousness. I like the big bold this is possession. I don't know. I liked, I liked that. I liked that it was obvious. Nothing quite scares me as much as possession. There's just something about losing full control of yourself, your being, and being possessed by an evil demonic spirit that is very terrifying to me. I know not everyone believes in possession. I know some people don't believe it's real. I, that's just a personal thing. I, I do believe that it is real. It's just something that I've always believed that exists. So possession really freaks me out. <laughs> I don't want to say that I don't like possession horror because I, I do. 
it's just, it's probably the one that scares me the most because I think it's the most realistic in my head, except for maybe like a serial killer. But I think that's more likely to happen than a zombie apocalypse or vampires or werewolves. I just don't see that happening, obviously. Or creatures, you know, monsters. I just don't believe in that. I don't think they're real. I don't get that. Whereas with serial killers or possession, I believe that can happen. So that scares me. <laughs> this book does a great job of immersing you into that loss of control feeling and feeling like you have zero control. And it's very scary to read someone going through that if it's a big fear of yours. So I really did enjoy that, that it was scary. Very creepy and spooky in my opinion, especially if you are afraid of demonic spirits and possession and things like that in the horror genre, then this would probably freak you out. This is actually such a great book. I was very impressed. Did not expect to like it as much as I did. It really... It was a really big surprise. I'm glad I picked it up. I'm glad I have it now. I feel like this is a book that I would want to read over and over again in a few years when I feel like I need something just to scare me a little bit. This would be a good book to pick up off the shelf and give another read because it's so short and it's also very scary. I also think people who love this type of horror genre would really enjoy this book because it is very good at portraying that demonic possession. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for my review on Come Closer by Sarah Gran. I obviously really, really liked the book. I highly recommend it to people who enjoy this type of horror. I think it's really well done. It's a great story, very, very interesting to read and very creepy. If you've read this book, let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to know if you liked it or if you didn't like it, why you didn't like it, why you did like it. I just would like to know your guys' thoughts. I think it would be interesting to have a discussion down below. If this sounds like something that you would like, I highly recommend checking it out. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you enjoy from me and enjoy seeing. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We can become friends and talk about horror and books and makeup and it'll be lots of fun. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you in my next video. Bye!